Get ready to grab life by the ball. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest dodgeball moments everybody remembers. I hope everything fits. <laughs> Wait, nice. For this list, we're focusing on the most hilarious moments from the 2004 sports comedy. From woeful pickup lines to painful wrench shots, spoiler alert. Number 10, White tries to pick up Kate. Oh, hello, Catherine. Good to see you. I didn't know you were dropping by. You asked me to come over. Did I? Watching White Goodman trying to smooth talk someone is like watching a car crash. And in this scene, where he tries to ask Kate out on a date while casually sipping vitamin water, we get White turned up to 11. So I should probably get back. That is a really interesting painting. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's me taking the bull by the horns. That's how I handle my business. It's a metaphor. I get it. But that actually happened, though. Not only does he pump up his ego before she arrives, but he goes on to boast about reading the dictionary, claim he wrestled a bull by the horns, misspells his name, and jokingly offers to shackle Kate up. I'm just kidding. But seriously, I've got him. It's pretty much all of the white Goodman-isms you can think of, at the same time. We should mate. What? Date! I said we should date sometime, you know, socially. Go out and kick it. Number nine, sexy car wash. I know how we can raise the money. How? Car wash. Washing a car while wearing swimwear can help draw in customers, right? Well, we guess, unless you're these guys. In an attempt to make some money so they can save their gym, the guys of Average Joe's slip on their slickest summer wear and offer to wash cars, only to find that there's a group of women across the street doing the same thing. I mean, what are the chances? Same day, right across the street? Although this moment is terribly embarrassing, the crown jewel is Jason and that guy with his truck. Well, at least he's paying him, which is something, right? That's it, boy. Get in there nice and deep like. Yeah, that's not good. Number eight, the five Ds of dodgeball. If only all of the educational videos in school were this much fun. In an attempt to bring the guys up to speed on the rules and history of dodgeball, Gordon shows them this cheesy retro video, with Hank Azaria brilliantly playing a young version of Patches O'Houlihan. Gee, Bruce, really? You betcha, champ. Young Patches talks us through the rules and gives us a bit of advice on who to pick and who not to pick for the team. Remember to pick the bigger, stronger kids for your team. That way, you can all gang up on the weaker ones. And he tops off his rallying speech by giving us the ultimate winning dodgeball formula in the form of the five Ds. You'll be an all-star yet. Just remember the five Ds of dodgeball. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Number seven, introducing the team. You have brief moments where you're not completely... What? Well, I'm not completely what? Pathetic. Speaking of picking your team, there's always that one team who ends up with all the biggest and strongest players, and they're usually captained by an insecure jackass like White Goodman. Blade. Laser. Blazer. Flaunting his new collection of athletes, White gate crashes the average Joe's drinking at a bar and introduces his team one by one, including his deadly secret weapon, who Owen just so happens to have the hots for. After massaging his own ego, White decides to hit Peter with some put-downs in the form of mimicking him, which is once again classic White Goodman. Touché indeed. Touché. Number six, White bribes Peter. I mean, come on. I know you. You know you. And I know you know that I know you. Although White talks a good game, he's mostly all talk. And he reveals in this scene that he's clearly scared that average Joes can whoop his purple cobras. And so he hatches a plan to bribe Peter, but not before spouting absolute nonsense and giving us some of the most infinitely quotable dialogue in cinema history. Including a line that proves he is clearly not dumb. You really think you can come in here and buy me out, White? You're a lot dumber than I thought. <laughs> oh, I don't think I'm a lot dumber than you thought that I think that I thought I was once. We love the fact that the whole cash in a suitcase reveal completely mocks the Hollywood cliché, and even White is onto how misleading it is. At least he's not completely clueless. I don't know if you've ever seen $100,000, except maybe in the movies. But I assure you, something gets lost 
in the translation. Number five, cheerleading practice. I'm sure it's not that big of a deal. What happened at last year's tryouts? Let's just take a moment to appreciate perhaps the most average Joe of all, Justin Redman. At pretty much every turn, Justin gets a smack in the face. More on that later. And in this flashback scene, Justin recounts how a cheerleading tryout went terribly wrong, leaving him embarrassed in front of a girl he liked. I'm not wearing any panties. Oh, ready? One, two. The scrawny Justin gets partnered with someone who is probably twice his size and weight, and with him having to lift her above his head, it was only going to end one way. At least he didn't completely suffocate. Wow. <laughs> Number four, private reflection period. We learn early on in the film that White Goodman has a bit of a complicated relationship with food. He talks about how he used to be overweight, and we see how he uses electrodes to keep his willpower in check when it comes to eating donuts. Ouch. One little bite won't hurt you. But this scene is, well, we don't quite know what it is. Sitting in his office watching some sort of cooking program, White is holding a slice of pizza, which he gears up to put down his pants, only for his assistant Michelle to walk in on him. Sure, I think you should take a look at. Whoa! No! What? 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 What have I said about knocking? Hmm? Turns out it's some sort of private reflection period. Gross. And what is so important that you need to interrupt me during my private reflection period? Number three, nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Well, I'll simply have to woo Kate a bit sooner than nature intended. But rest assured, Michelle, there's no resisting when White Goodman puts on his shiny shoes. This guy just doesn't know when to quit. Although White fails miserably at wooing Kate early on in the movie, he decides to pay her a visit at her home to give it another shot. Surprise! White! Uh, what? What are you, what are you doing here? How do you, uh, know where I live? It's called the Freedom of Information Act, Kate. While wearing a white leather suit and neck scarf, he fires her, offers her a flower, and seems confused why she won't date him. And to make matters worse, he leans in for a kiss, only to get his head slammed against a wall, busting his lip. To be continued. Oh! No! You don't get to touch me! Ever. Awkward, right? Well, at least he rides out of there in style. And we'll always have this classic line. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Nobody! Number two, cursing Chuck Norris. So we already mentioned White's past and how he used to be overweight. Well, after losing the dodgeball tournament, no thanks to Chuck Norris allowing average Joes to compete, things go a little downhill for him, and he gains a little weight. <laughs> Spare me. Right before the end credits roll, White can be seen oogling at the TV, bucket of chicken in hand, cursing the name of Norris. You want a little something something for the ride home? Check these boots out for size. And for those who stuck around right to the very end, there's even a post credit scene where White shows off some of his dance moves. Before we unveil our most iconic number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Unfortunately for Troop 417, during the ADAA required random drug screening, one of your player's urine tested positive for three separate types of anabolic steroids and a low grade Beaver tranquilizer. You know, once I was thinking about quitting when I was diagnosed with brain, lung, and testicular cancer all at the same time. But with the love and support of my friends and family, I got back on the bike and I won the Tour de France five times in a row. But I'm sure you have a good reason to quit. Hey. The winner of this match goes on to face Globo Jim in the finals, and right now it's oh, right in the testicles. Ouch, town population, you, bro! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, if you can dodge a wrench. Some people work better under pressure and appreciate an extra bit of motivation. And what better way to motivate someone to dodge a hurtling rubber ball than to make them, um, dodge oncoming traffic and also pelt them with wrenches, right? If you master the five Ds, no amount of balls on earth can hit you. 
Teaching the guys the importance of the five Ds of dodgeball, Patches enlightens the group with his pithy wisdom. And Justin is the first one to fall victim to it. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. What? We then watch as the guys dance their way through a routine, all while being target practice for Patches. You've got to appreciate their commitment, or worry about his sanity. Take your pick. If you can dodge traffic, you can dodge a ball. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.